The thing about this is I hate this applicator. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's the most wonderful time of the year, which is the end. <laughs> it is time in the YouTube world for the best of yearly favorites. So I have lots of products here in my little box to mention to you. And my entire face of makeup today is made up of these products as well, so I'll be pointing them out as we go. A little bit for my selections of this year is that many of these did come out in 2019, but some of them also did not. And so this best of beauty 2019 is best of what I have been using in 2019, not specifically only products that came out in 2019. I'm gonna be going through each category or each step of makeup in order. In each of these categories, I selected one affordable drugstore option and one high-end option. That way y'all have options for both. And honestly, in almost every one of these categories, I would really, really recommend the affordable option because I choose those a lot over my high-end products that I also own. And so I'll tell you specific examples of that as I go through the video. So I'm going to just be putting my little box in my lap and let's get into the products. So first step, first category is primer. And if I'm being honest with y'all, I don't use primer probably 60% of the days that I do my makeup. But if I do use one, it's probably this. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is the only category that I don't have both a high-end and affordable option just because I don't use enough to confidently give you like the best. So for affordable option, just literally any moisturizer. Skincare is the best primer anyway, so. Now into foundations, which is where my regular makeup starts. And so on my face today, I am wearing this. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. My shade is 425 Linen. This foundation did come out in 2019, like in the very, very beginning back in January. And you still see this around on YouTube. You see it on my YouTube channel because it really does stand the test of time. It not, it's not just hype. So in terms of my skin, which is combination oily, this foundation lasts really well throughout the day. The application of it is thin and smooth and seamless because also the formula of this is a little bit more of a watery formula, which is my preference. I think it makes application easier. And another thing is that even though I have combination oily skin, I see a lot of other people with dry skin also really enjoy this foundation. And so this is just something that I would universally recommend. This is an example of a affordable drugstore product that I choose over high end very often. Now my high-end pick for foundation is surprisingly not Fenty and not Too Faced. It is this. This is the It Cosmetic CC Cream and this is in the original formula. They also have an illuminating and a matte formula and I have tried the matte formula but I think the finish and how your skin looks is so much better with the original. I have this in the shade light and there are some very good things about this product in particular. One thing I love is that it has extra SPF coverage up to SPF 50. This wouldn't be the only SPF I wear throughout the day, but if there is a day that for some reason I rushed or I forgot to put on my base sunscreen but I had this, I would be pretty confident in my SPF coverage for that day. The sunscreen in this product is a physical sunscreen, not a chemical sunscreen, so that's also really good for people with sensitive skin. And another thing that I really like is that the second ingredient of this product is snail mucin. So that's snail slime, which sounds gross, but it's a product that you see a lot pretty much exclusively in Korean and Japanese skincare. So the fact that it is in an American product and so high up on the ingredient list is very impressive to me. So this I really like for its finish, its protection, and its ingredients. Now for concealers, I actually only have an affordable recommendation and that is this. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. My shade is in the shade Neutralizer which has the most yellow undertone. I would have to say this is my favorite concealer and I don't even think it warrants choosing a high-end one because I think this one would beat it out. This is a very thin formula, very easy to spread. It doesn't get cakey, it doesn't settle into lines. I don't know about the claims of like over time improving your under eye area just because I also don't have a lot of problems in that area to begin with. However, this is always just so easy for me to use and I never have to worry about how my eyes are looking throughout the day. And this also makes a wonderful eyeshadow primer and it also makes a wonderful face or kind of spot concealing concealer. So this is super multifunctional, very well loved for a very good reason. And so this is my best of beauty pick for concealers. And of course this concealer is what I'm wearing on my face today. For powders, my affordable pick is this. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and mine is in the shade Translucent. So I've used it so the little emblem or design has completely worn off and the lid is kind of broken. 
but this is a very very good product it helps your makeup last longer it takes away shine and it keeps shine away for at least a few hours this is also one of Ali Glein's favorites I know and this powder is very affordable you can find it for less than four dollars a lot of the times this is something that is very functional and very good at what it does my high-end favorite is this it's just a little mini of the hourglass translucent veil and I like this powder because it is so fine. It is so, so fine. So the main reason I chose this was not for longevity, but it was for texture and how fine it feels and for how pretty undetectable it is on the skin. I probably wouldn't buy the full size of this just because it's so expensive. If you ever have the opportunity to get your hands on a mini, whether it's on an add-on gift with a purchase or a mini in like a set of bigger minis, I would really recommend trying it. This is a category though that for actual value and functionality, I would recommend the affordable option over the high end. Now for bronzer, my affordable pick is this. This is the e.l.f. Primer Infused Bronzer and I have the lightest shade in Forever Sunkissed. I finally decided to pick up this product probably halfway through the year because Andrea Matalano really has high things to say about this and my skin type is very similar to hers and so I trust a lot of her recommendations and it really is so soft. It goes on so smoothly. It doesn't patch. There's no difficulty blending it out, even, even if you put it on a more tacky base. And it really does last a long time because it's primer infused. So any day, I would choose this bronzer over my Hoola bronzer, over my Bare Minerals bronzer, over my The Balm bronzer. And so the decision for my affordable bronzer was such a no-brainer for me. My high-end bronzer pick is very loved by the beauty community on YouTube, and that is this. This is the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Baked. And this bronzer comes with a ridiculous amount of product, 28 grams. I would go back in time and tell past Sally to just buy the mini of this. Even though the value of the full size per ounce is ridiculously better than getting the mini, I feel like it would take over a year to even use up the mini. So this bronzer has a beautiful neutral tone. It's not too orange, it's not too cool, and it blends out really seamlessly with a makeup sponge. I don't know, it just makes you look healthy. And I've been using this product exclusively for days that I do cream-based products, which is about half of the time nowadays. And the reason why I only have this cream bronzer and the e.l.f. one, which I had before getting this, is because since getting this, I haven't felt the desire whatsoever to purchase another cream bronzer. If I could recommend only one high-end product out of all the products I'm naming today, out of all the products I own, even eyeshadow palettes, I would recommend this. It's just so good. Also, this is the bronzer that I'm wearing on my face today. Now, the category of blush. For this category, I actually have three picks, and that's because one of my picks is kind of mid-tier, not drugstore affordable, but also not exactly high-end. So let me start with the affordable option, and that is this. This is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Luminoso. This is not new to anybody, and I've just consistently enjoyed using this throughout the year. There's not really a lot to say about this. It does have a luminous finish, and it is possible to put on too much with that sheen, but a light wash of this just makes you look very healthy and naturally blushy <laughs> and cute. Now, the mid-tier product is this. This is the Glossier Cloud Paint, and mine is in the shade Dusk, and so this is a very neutral nude shade of cream blush they have. If any of y'all have used this Glossier Cloud Paint, you know how little products you need, and I've almost used this up. I remember getting this, I said, never in a million, million years am I gonna use up this product because it has so much, but I have, and that speaks for how much I've been using it. If I would recommend anything from Glossier, it would be the cloud paints over their boy brow because there are so many dupes to that, over the mascara because it doesn't work very well, <laughs> over skincare because there are more affordable options for that as well. But for the cloud paint, I really haven't found anything yet that emulates the same texture and the same finish. And the Glossier cloud paint is the blush I'm wearing on my face today. Now, my high-end pick for blush is this. This is the Clinique Cheek Pop, and my shade is in Ginger Pop. Look at the use on this. It's a powder, but it's very creamy. It applies so smoothly. It's super pigmented, and so I actually, when I first used this or got this, I did not expect it to be that pigmented. For some reason, with Clinique, I was thinking like, oh, I'll have to build it up some. No. Blush isn't completely matte. It has a bit of a satin sheen that I think in blush especially looks very good. It just makes you look good. The Clinique Cheek Pops have been around forever, and I think that this is also another product that stands the test of time. Now for highlighter. My affordable pick for highlighter is this. This is the ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in the shade Lunch Money. I also have the shade Flexitarian, and I know a lot of people recommend Flexitarian because it's so 
strong and blinding and it's their best selling shade for their super shock highlighters however i like lunch money because flexitarian is a lot and it is very icy and lunch money is very toned down it's more of a natural sheen and so that's what i have on my cheeks today i feel like with flexitarian sometimes i need to be in a mood to have that look but lunch money works for work it works for school it works for a date it works for daily and you're not gonna look crazy <laughs> i also have a ColourPop light sticks which is their stick cream highlighter formula but between the light stick and the super shock i would recommend a super shock the formula is softer and i honestly find that this formula is easier to work with as well for high-end highlighters i actually chose two items but they do kind of different things so the first item is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This product is really expensive, but I don't think anyone has been able to find a good dupe for this in terms of mimicking the smoothness and reflectiveness and glowy look that this has. I think Milani has a similar liquid product as this, but the texture of that is not as smooth as this is. And so is it worth paying an extra like $40? I don't know maybe you can ask for a sample from this at sephora and see what i'm talking about because i remember before i got it i was like it can't be that good like it seems like it's something that you can barely see anyways but this actually looks wet and glossy and i really hate recommending this just because how expensive it is but i love it and my second item for highlighter within the high-end category is a becca highlighter and this one in particular is in gradient glow it's one that has five different shades of the highlighters all in one but what i use is moonstone and opal here so i always put my brush in this area and apply it and so if you have a single highlighter of opal or a single highlighter of moonstone that's fine my favorite in terms of this product is a formula it is so smooth this is Lauren May Beauty's favorite powder highlighting formula, and I can see why. So this is for days when I want a little bit stronger of a highlight, but not like oh fresh strong, like normal, I like makeup, strong highlight. <laughs> because this is a little bit of a stronger highlight, it does catch on texture. And so if I have like a big pimple right on my high cheekbones, I probably won't use this. But when I want like a highlight that shows, this is so good. <laughs> okay, so that was everything for the base. Now let's go into brows. Firstly, brow pencil. So my affordable pick for a brow pencil is the ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil, and mine is in the shade Black and Brown. The formula of this is pretty creamy. And so what I do with this one is I just kind of draw one line <laughs> in the middle or on the bottom border of my brows. And then with this spoolie, which I love, this is a really good spoolie, I just brush it through. And since this is a creamy formula, it gives you time to work with it. And so when I brush it through, it kind of fills in the rest of my brows and this is the brow pencil i'm wearing today and this is also the brow pencil i choose when i'm running short on time because i just go like this and then brush 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 brush, brush and then i'm ready to go my high-end pick for brow pencil is the benefit goof proof brow pencil and so this is how it looks like the shape of it is not a thin pencil like a precision pencil it kind of has a teardrop shape at the top this is a bit of a harder pencil than the ColourPop one, but not as hard as the NYX brow pencils. And so because of the shape and because of the texture of this, it allows me to fill in my brows in a very natural way. That also doesn't take a lot of time. And the spoolie on this is also very good. It's a very, I like very firm spoolies because if I put on brow gel and I wanna brush it up, I really like to get in there. And I like spoolies that can stand up to that. And so this is another good one. Now for brow gel. My affordable pick for eyebrow gel is the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel, and I use a tinted one in dark brown. And this is what the little spoolie looks like, and I love this size and this shape of spoolie for my eyebrows. This formula has small fibers in it, and it helps kind of fluff up your brows. This is also an exact to dupe for the Glossier Boy Brow. It has the same size and shape of the brush and the same fibers with the same effect. So if you've been curious about the Boy Brow, I would recommend trying this product. For my high-end favorite, I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. And so this is like the same size and same shape as the ColourPop one. The brush shape, however, is a lot bigger. And so when I use this product, I take this brush and run it through each of my brows. And then I put it back, set this aside, <laughs> and I take the spoolie from one of my brow pencils and then brush that gel through just so I don't get too much product on my brows from the little brush of the gel itself. This brow gel I chose because it has 
extreme hold. It's like hairspray almost for my eyebrows and it does make them a little bit crunchy. If you don't like that feeling, then I don't think you'd like this product. However, I don't go through my days like feeling my brows anyways. And so if this can get my really heavy and unruly hairs to stay in a shape, then I like it. So this is the brow gel that I'm wearing today. All right, now let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. So as you guys know, I love eyeshadow. And so I know you're excited for what I chose. So for affordable option, I have the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. And this is how it looks. Also keep in mind, there were two pressed glitters here, but I took those out because I don't use them. And I put in a couple shades from my Yes Please palette, but the rest of the palette is part of the original color scheme. This is the palette that I am wearing on my eyes today. And I started this look fully intending to go in with Melody, which is a peach based shimmer with a gold flip because that's what I use almost every time I use this palette. However, I ended up doing an all matte look and I don't do all matte eyeshadow looks very often, but I was doing my eyeshadow kind of setting my base of mattes and then I looked in my mirror and I was like, I think this will be it. <laughs> The mattes in here are beautiful. The shimmers are beautiful. It has a super shock shadow. I like having a super shock in a palette like this just because it makes it so much more likely that I'm gonna actually use it. If it's in a separate container, I really can't be bothered a lot of the time to open it up after I've used the palette already. If you saw my video ranking all of my ColourPop palettes, this came up on top. And also this was included in my If I Could Only Keep 10 Palettes video. And yeah, I mean, y'all have seen me talk about this a lot lately. It's not really a surprise to anyone. My high-end pick for eyeshadow palette is, is anyone surprised? I bet y'all are tired of seeing this eyeshadow palette around this time of year because it's in everybody's favorites videos, but it's for good reason. This palette did come out this year and the color story, the quality of it, the shades in this palette are very unique in both their tones as well as their richness. This is the best Anastasia Beverly Hills formula that they've come out with ever. And you can go only as crazy as you want to go with this palette. If you want to do a completely neutral eye, you can. If you want to do a hot pink and purple eye, you can. If you want to do a duochrome single shadow look, you can. If you want to do a really strong burgundy red tone look, you can. This palette is so versatile and I think it's the first palette of Anastasia Beverly Hills that I've seen that you can get so many different looks that all make sense. Whew, okay, got out of breath talking about this one. Now on to eyes. I do not have eyeliner favorites just because I very rarely use eyeliner. If anything, I'll use like a brown tone of an eyeshadow to do a shadow liner. But in terms of pencil liners and shadow liners, I do not have the experience to confidently give you a favorite. So moving on to mascara. The best affordable mascara that I've tried is a mascara that y'all have seen on many channels. And this is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara. This is not what I'm wearing on my eyes today, only because I used this up months ago. So this isn't empty. The wand of it is an hourglass shape, which became really popular after the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. And this came out as a dupe of it. And compared to the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, this is way better in my opinion. The Too Faced mascara is a flaky mess by the end of the day, but this doesn't do that to me. In the beginning of my channel, this is pretty much all I was using in all my videos because it gives me a very thick eyelash look. And I have very short, very stubby, very thin eyelashes. It's those Asian jeans. But this gives me eyelashes that show up on camera. My high-end pick also does those things, and that is this. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. And this is a, I don't know if it's called a tubing mascara, but it is one that kind of builds upon itself with fibers. And so when you wash it off, you kind of have to like pinch your eyelash and then it, it, there are little like strands of mascara that come off. And so this is what I'm actually wearing on my eyes today. And I didn't do a crazy number of coats or anything. I just did a normal standard, like one to two coats of mascara. And you can kind of see, you can kind of see my eyelashes. With my eye shape and my kind of eyelashes, if I don't wear mascara, it kind of feels like my eyes like disappear into my face. It's probably not like that, but, but when I do wear mascara, it really opens my eyes and brings them forward. And so yeah, I really love these two mascaras. Now, lastly, we have lip products. So I have one set of picks for lipstick and one set of picks for lip gloss. So first, let's do lipsticks. And for this, I actually have two affordable picks, but again, they do different things. So they are both actually from L'Oreal. This is the L'Oreal Rouge Signature Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade I Tease. And this is one of their newer shades when they expanded their shade range. And this is the L'Oreal Color Rich Shine Lipstick in the shade is in Glossy Fawn. 
And so both of these are my perfect perfect nude lipsticks. I remember when I first got this product, I came home and tried it on as we do. Like literally the thought that went into my head was, I'm done looking for nude lipsticks. The formula of this is very, very liquidy. It's not a thick or a moussey formula. And so it's pretty much like water and it's as comfortable as wearing water. Another thing I like about this, which some people may like, some people may dislike, is that with the bolder shades, like I also have a red in this formula, it stains your lips. And the reason why I like that is because not only is this formula really water-like and comfortable, it also won't wear off to where I have a ring of my normal pink lips and then like an outline of red crusty lip. <laughs> And so this is the lipstick I'm wearing on my lips today under my lip gloss. If I could only choose one lipstick, crazy idea, I know. If I could only choose one lipstick, it would be this one. Over any of my high-end lipsticks, over any of my bullet lipsticks, because honestly, I even feel like this is more comfortable than a lot of my like bullet lipsticks like this. So as you can tell, I love this lipstick. My second pick, as I said, is the L'Oreal Color Rich Shine. And so this is a bullet lipstick, but the formula of this leaves a very glossy sheen. And so this is kind of like what I consider to be a lipstick and a lip gloss in one. You don't need to put a gloss over this. It's very comfortable. It feels like a lip balm. And here's a color of that over here. And this product I have literally almost used down to the very end. This is everything that's left. And let me crank it all the way down. So you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see how much of this product I have used. And so this is the one lip product in my collection that I have used the most, like that I can see the most visible use of. Now my high-end pick for lipstick is this. This is the NARS Velvet Lip Glide in the shade Swing. And this is another one of my perfect nudes. Please ignore that that was literally the worst place to possibly swatch something. This is not a matte dry down liquid lipstick. It is very plush feeling. It's called Velvet Lip Glide and I think that is the most aptly named product that I've ever seen. <laughs> it feels like velvet and it really does glide across your lips. And when you rub your lips together, your lips slip past each other. And so it doesn't get sticky or tacky. And this is also a product that kind of stains my lips a little bit. And so when it wears off, my lips still look smooth and still have some color to them. So I have a lot of lipsticks, like an embarrassing number of lipsticks. And these three products are seriously my go-tos. I wear these so disproportionately often for the size of my lipstick collection. And for lip gloss, I actually don't have one for both affordable and high-end category. So my only gloss pick are these. This is the Fenty Gloss Balm, and the shades I'm holding up are Fenty Glow, which was the original shade, and Fussy, which was one of the shades in their second release of shades. And I also do have the shade in Diamond Milk, but I am choosing these two shades because Diamond Milk does have a little bit of little small glitter particles in it, which is fine, but another thing about Diamond Milk that makes me not want to use it that much is because I feel like I always have to wipe down the wand before I put it back into the product after using it on my lips. And that's just the only way to avoid the actual like entire container of product from getting really gross and not white anymore. So a lot of mornings I can't be bothered with that and I reach for one of these. Fenty Glow is a warmer shade and Fussy is a pink tone shade, but on the lips they look essentially the same. They give you the same effect. And I have both of these in minis, which is the same amount of product as another brand's full-size lip gloss. I am wearing Fussy on my lips currently over my L'Oreal lipstick in ITs. For affordable lip glosses, I really don't have one that I would call a favorite or the best. The closest thing would be this ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Moonchild, which is one of Kathleen Light's shades. But the thing about this is I hate this applicator. This is a brush tip applicator. I love the formula, I love the shade, but I hate putting it on. If this had a normal doe foot lip gloss applicator, this would be my affordable favorite, but it's not because I hate putting it on because I hate the applicator. Oh, there's one more category that I forgot about and that is setting sprays. So my affordable pick is the Wet n Wild 3-in-1 Primer Water and my high-end pick is the Smashbox Primer Water. So this is what came out first, what is a classic, this is what came out later and is supposed to kind of be a more affordable option for this and I love both of them. I only get this if it's on extreme discount in like a holiday set that then is discounted that then I get a percent off of sale or have a gift card for. But the thing I love about this is just the mist is so fine. But the thing is the Wet n Wild one is very similar. I think I've seen some places that people don't like the spray of this but it's never given me a problem. 
So just spraying that, it's not as fine as the Smashbox one. The thing is, if you get a mini of the Smashbox one and you ever use it up, you can just refill it with whatever setting spray you want. And then every setting spray will have the same mist as the Smashbox one. The smell of the cucumber one is very nice and very nostalgic to me. It reminds me of the Bath and Body Works scent cool cucumber or something like that that was super big in like the early 2000s and there you have it those are my affordable and high-end favorites of 2019 were you surprised by any of my picks probably not do you have some of the same favorites let me know but yeah i just wish y'all a happy new year and i'm so excited for all the things that 2020 has to bring and all the things i have planned and i feel like everyone who makes an end of year like even outside of the beauty community, end of year video says like 2019 was the worst, Mercury was in retrograde, <laughs> and we're like so glad to leave it behind and on to 2020. And I'm actually saying something similar, 2019 was so rough, and I know it was rough for a lot of us, <sighs> but it was also good in terms of learning a lot and growing a lot and becoming stronger and more resilient. This is kind of a weird wish, but I wish for 2020 to also not be easy for me because then I will become better. Now, thank y'all so much for watching. This was so much fun to plan and record. These videos I look forward to every year and I'm excited to be able to make one to share myself this year. And also, before you go about the rest of your day, I wanted to remind you that y'all are my treasure. And remember to find beauty in every day. And most importantly, be kind to yourself. I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Let's go have some fun. <laughs>